Hello, welcome to Bygram YouTube channel. And this video is for those who are planning on uh, modifying their multi-speed bicycles into single-speed bicycles, which is rather modern these days, and hipsters and everything else. And I also had some viewers ask about the reverse process of modifying single-speed bicycles into multi-speed ones, but this video will be the perhaps simpler procedure with fewer caveats, fewer problems. And I will make then another follow-up video about the reverse process. So for this uh, example, I took this multi-speed bicycle. I will not be turning really this into a single speed one, but I think it will be enough because this is my fastest bicycle. But this will be enough to show the procedure and uh, the basic principle and uh, the problems you might face. So when, uh, when altering a multi-speed bicycle into a spin single speed one, there are two problems you will have to solve. First one is chain line, and the second one is the rear dropout spacing for a single speed wheel. Now, as far as chain line goes, I will post a link in this video description on my article that explains everything about uh, chain line and how it is measured and why it is important and all the other stuff about that. And I will here just briefly touch up on that. The, and the other problem is about the rear dropout. So we will now show you uh, both. Okay. Now for the for the chain line, we will have to move camera a bit to, to show it better, perhaps. And let's mount the wheel first. Okay. I'm not sure if you can see, but the idea, especially for single speed bicycles, is to have the chain run as straight as possible along the bicycle's length. Uh, along its to be uh, as perfectly parallel to its to bicycle's longitudinal uh, axis as possible because if it is at an angle especially if using single speed chains which which makes makes you uh, makes sense with single speed bicycles you don't want to have them at an angle because then uh, chain drop is more likely to happen that is chain falling off your chain rings and bicycle no longer working so that's one problem to you will face and when you have multiple chain rings at the front uh, the chain line is usually aimed to, for the middle part between two chain rings if there are two or if you have three for the middle chain ring to be aligned with the middle of the rear cassette and when you have a single speed bicycles you will have only one chain ring at the rear so you are aiming at its middle at, and here you will only be using one chain ring if you wish to keep the old cranks or if you put a single speed crank then you will have to align that front chain ring with the, with the rear the only one rear sprocket that you have left and depending on the model of the bottom bracket or and the axle you have and on your cranks you will have to perhaps alter the this distance by either putting more spacers or using longer or shorter axle and when, when it comes to the rear wheel we will discuss that in a bit but this is the main challenge and we will again mention the chain line when we come to the rear end but now I will show the problems with the rear wheel and the dropouts those dropouts with now let's move the camera okay I think we got this about right you can see what's important let's remove this wheel And let's take a single speed wheel. Here you will have a chain ring mounted, of course, but this one still doesn't have it. And so when I put it inside the frame, okay, having some problems here. Okay, now you can see how much space there is. This is not coming to the end of the inner side of the drop and the right one I'm not sure if it's shown on the camera but it also has more than one centimeter of space so what can we do for for this to work uh, we could add a few more nuts on both ends of this to make it wider but even even so in this case and this is a 130 millimeter wide dropout some are 135 on multi-speed bicycles especially on, on mountain bikes and tracking bikes and so on 
uh, this will not protrude enough for the bolts that will hold it in place to be to be screwed on at least not over more than a few threads so in order to be secure you need to have the full engagement so uh, we would have to add alter this distance and that's one problem and we'll see how to address that this is an improvised tool that I made for that use it's fairly simple uh, this part you can use to uh, like a lock nut to have two nuts screwed against each other if I move this one further and lock them so that I can use a wrench to to just just turn it around when it becomes difficult in this case this one is pretty tight and I use this so I can use the tool and this one stays in place it's for conveniently moving it by hand so what I would do is to just and I have these washers, like this smaller one and this larger one, and it's nicely lubricated. Everything, so I just put it over the rear dropouts. And I would push it all the way to the back, which means I would have to remove the, the rear derailleur. Let's see if it's caught on camera. Yeah, so I hope you can see. And so, let's get it a bit more close up. Okay, I think that's better. Anyway. I would start tightening until I get the desired width and a bit further more for some at least 5 to 10 millimeters more because this will uh, move back after you after you bend it like it does it this way I'm not putting enough force to bend it but you can see it it pushes back so even when I start bending it it will push back after you do that you, sh you can use something like it's similar to like like this one that is put onto the dropout, tightened, and I put something similar on the other side and see if they are aligned. If they are misaligned, I need to, to move the dropouts to angle them so they are, they are in line, like parallel to the a longitudinal axis of the bicycle and so they are facing each other, not, not moving away from each other in any direction. So that's something to pay attention to and do not forget with uh, steel frames you can do this, but with aluminum or carbon fiber frame, frames this will damage them, so that's out of the question. That is another important thing to, to note. Okay, now if we have made this at least close to what we need, but we don't want to push it too much, because if we push this too, too much, make it too narrow, for example, move this one like uh, 15 millimeters to the inside and this one like 15 millimeters to the inside, in that case, the, the rear sprocket would be too much too close to this and I would not be able to make the chain line go fairly well so that's something to like uh, trial and error you could measure the chain line the closest one you can get with this depending on the choice of your of your cranks whether you use larger diameter front chain ring or smaller depending on your gearing choice and then see what kind of axles you you can you can find and you wish to use and only after that see how much chain line you can get away with this from here it's always measured from the bicycle's longitudinal axle how much this protrudes outward and how much the rear sprocket protrudes outwards so there here you are limited even if, you, if there is a steel frame you can't just push it too much to the inside in general there there is something as i hope i explained correctly what to look out for and another thing once you have it at least to a degree to a desired desired width and you need just to add a, a few more like spacers here or, or some smaller nut that uh, with enough place for engaging the the bolts that will hold it in place if you need to add more a bit more spacing you can add it on this side like thin one on this side and thin one on the other side but then the rear sprocket is again moved closer to the inside of the frame so generally better option is to put just a thick one on the left left hand side and then tighten the left hand side spokes so that the rim stays in the center of the of the bicycle here let me show this for example if i put some more spacers on the left hand side it will look like this and i would have to, have to tighten the left hand side spokes to bring it the rim in the center so that the bicycle rides nicely when you ride it off hands without hands and so on 
and I think that is it. I hope I've explained the process properly. If you have any other questions, you can use the comment section below and thank you for watching. Here, I'm not sure if I'm caught on the camera, still trying to work with this new stand and uh, that's it. Cheers.